Good afternoon. Thank you for coming. I'm Ron Gagnon. I'm executive director of Noble and uh, going to share some of what we've uh, discovered over the past uh, couple of years in the hosting of our system. Thank you. Okay, well, the beautiful thing, uh, one of the beautiful things about open source and Evergreen in particular is that you've got options. When you've got a vendor system, many times your options are, are limited as to what you can do, how you can run it, um, and uh, ultimately what becomes of the system um, software. But the beauty of uh, Evergreen is that you've got options. You've got Choices for hosting, choices for support. Um, you can decide to do it all yourself. You can do none of it. Um, now there are cost implications as everything in the world to, to all of those. Uh, some of it is upfront, some of it's ongoing, some of it's more within your control, some of it's contractual for, for better or for worse. Uh, but that's really the nice thing. You, you have those choices. You can run the numbers for yourself what your abilities uh, are, uh, your, your staff, your operation. So um, the, the real, the three main questions that, that have a flow chart that go from here is your place or theirs, your equipment or theirs, and who's providing the support? And we'll go into those. So your hosting options, I mean, you can, as a do-it-yourself option, just have it in your own facility or you can rent space in another com computer facility um, for the hardware that you own, uh, called, sometimes called co-location. You can get your own piece of the cloud if you're willing to do it yourself and figure it out yourself and run it yourself, that's, that's all cool. Uh, or you can deal with contractors. You can deal with a contractor, use a contractor uh, that's running their own data center, or you can use a contractor that's uh, using the cloud. Uh, and either of those, if you have a contractor, you have various support options, which we will get into. Otherwise, if you're doing it yourself, you're doing it yourself. Uh, so starting with the server room you own, uh, that requires a lot of expertise in-house, uh, either in-house right on your staff or in-house in terms of people you more directly and locally contract with. Um, you, have, you have to have, your staff has to know server hardware. I mean, we've had, we hosted our own um, data center for, for decades, and we had staff that was very willing to step up and, and learn the hardware and uh, get in there and replace memory chips and all of those kinds of things and look, looking for the flashing yellow lights. And uh, we did it. Um, you have to know the server operating system, usually some form of Unix. Uh, and you have to have either, uh, you have some expertise in a, in a Rolodex of, uh, you have to maintain your, unless you're in a, you know, an academic institution or a larger institution that has uh, HVAC staffing, uh, for instance, because your computer room is going to be air conditioned 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, uh, it's going to keep going. Um, electrical system expertise, and not just electrical system like you know, is the outlet running, but we're talking perhaps a generator, we're talking uh, an under, uninterruptible power supply, uh, in addition to the obvious, um, yeah, the basic uh, electrician kind of thing. Uh, and um, attaching to those systems, to a generator, to a HVA system requires some flexibility with your building. Uh, you, you're building people, uh, you need, those all have a, an outside component. Uh, how easy is it to get to the outside component? So the cost of self-hosting, uh, obviously, uh, servers. You have to you have to buy it. Uh, there's a maintenance contract, probably. 
um, and you have to replace it uh, generally on a five year cycle. Um, so those are all costs that you need to come up with, plan for, uh, get funding for, and then obviously the cost of staffing to, to, to run it. Some of the, you know, those were the obvious uh, costs of, of self-hosting, um, but there's electricity. For us, that was about $3,000 a year when we were uh, hosting, both for the servers and the HVAC system. Uh, you need a faster internet line than you might ordinarily have if you were just doing your uh, office uh, support staff. Uh, there's the floor space. One way or another, we were, were Noble is a nonprofit 501c3 consortia, so we were renting space in, in an office park. So that's uh, square footage that we were, we were literally paying for uh, as part of our office space. Um, you know, if you're part of a larger institution, then there's kind of cost trade-offs there. And you have to, again, buy, maintain, replace the, the UPS power supply, the generator, the HVAC system um, on an ongoing basis and set aside money for that and plan for that. Um, and I think the thing that really bothered me, if that's the right sense, but concerned me, I guess is a better way of putting it, is that cybersecurity. And, and that's kind of going to be a little bit of a theme here too. As we heard this morning at the keynote, um, you know, they were, uh, Boston Public Library was patching, you know, things every other week. Um, and that's something that's your staff time. If you're doing it yourself, that's something that might be downtime if you're doing it yourself. So that's, that's, that's an issue. But yeah, obviously you have to do it or else the, the, uh, the downside is a real downside. Um, so moving from having your own back room to co-location, uh, that's least computer room space. Uh, you don't need a, as the facility expertise because the landlord is taking care of the power of the HVAC. Um, you know, not paying for the space in your building. Um, but you still need the hardware and all of that, the maintenance costs, the replacement costs, and, and all of that, and the, and the staff expertise. Um, and there is a cost that you're paying to the landlord um, for the space uh, and the utilities, the internet, the HVAC, the power. Um, so the costs are similar except for the floor space, but, you've, but you've, you're still paying that one way or another. Um, so in both of those cases, the co-location or your own room, your staff is providing all the support you know, in most cases. Uh, your staff is doing all the maintenance of the servers, operating system, software, um, the patches, as I said, uh, and you're alone as the first line of defense for, for cybersecurity, for anything that goes wrong 24 by seven. And both of those have a lot of single points of failure, despite the fact that you get a generator to provide to, in case of a, an electrical blackout, but you know, um, sometimes generator doesn't kick on. Um, you probably only have one internet connection. Uh, all of those things can really be, be an issue. So the next step beyond that is your own piece of the cloud. There are many cloud services available. Obviously, the big ones are Amazon and Google, um, but there are, there are others. Um, and this actually requires a different kind, but a, a different kind of, of staff expertise, in a way more staff expertise, because in addition to knowing the operating system and the evergreen software and loading that. Um, there's uh, Kubernetes, Docker, all things that, that you need to place evergreen on in the cloud. Uh, and no, I can't explain it any more than that. Um, but, uh, but it's a thing, it's a serious thing that requires some, some knowledge and expertise. Uh, it's much more cyber secure because the, uh, in most cases, particularly the big places, are, t are doing the operating system upgrades, the, the Googles and the Amazons, um, have their own cybersecurity detection kinds of things. So it offloads uh, a good chunk of that to the cloud. Um, you're not paying for physical space. Um, there's no electrical costs, HVAC expertise, uh, equipment, that kind of thing. Uh, they, the beauty of that is they have many redundant and often uh, clean energy sources, uh, internet sources, and all of that kind of thing. So that eliminates that single point of failure danger 
um, kind of, so helping to keep your service going a, a more robust level of service. Um, and because you can swap out servers, uh, it's, it's easier upgrades, more redundant hardware, which is something you probably don't have with your, in your back room or your co-location. Um, the other, another option is dealing with a contractor that, that may operate their own data center. Um, typical, typically, this is kind of a, a, a one-stop shopping where they provide hosting, migration support, um, and you don't have to do much of anything if you don't want to. Um, they may or may not, if they're not in the cloud, they may or may not have redundant hardware systems, uh, or they may or may not have redundant and electrical uh, and internet service. And this probably going to be a variety of levels of support. Uh, you may be uh, limited to what, in some ways, to what they will let you do, um, but you can pay for, for different levels of service uh, that can take the place of your staff, that can support your staff, um, that kind of thing. To be, cho to be, it's a choice, it's a cost. There are, there are contractors that will host in the cloud for you. Um, it, it, that's an appealing uh, solution. Um, they provide, they take care of the, the hosting, the migration, the support, uh, again, the various levels of, of as you need, uh, varying with the contract. Um, the cloud, again, has the redund redundant electrical, internet, all of that kind of thing, uh, redundant server capacity. Um, and the big houses tend to be very cyber secure. Obviously, cybersecurity has takes many forms and many levels, um, and so whatever you do in terms of obviously um, the operating system is going to be more secure. It doesn't mean that you're still not subject to phishing exploits and a whole of other exploits that you still need to manage, like you would with any system. But some of the basics are are a little more secure if you can't get your staff uh, if your staff isn't available to upgrade all of the underlying systems you know, as often as they need to be. So um, there, are, there are a good number of choices there. Um, things to think about. What's the expertise? What's the experience uh, of the provider that you're talking with? Uh, be it uh, the, the track record of a, of a plain vanilla just hosting solution or the, the support solution uh, level. Um, if you're talking with people that are, um, you know, a, a support organization, then what's their expertise in terms of systems? Systems users of, of Evergreen and any system vary greatly from statewide systems practically to, to small, you know, single libraries. And they can, you know, a, a vendor can tell you, oh yeah, we, we host, you know, a dozen different outfits, but are they a dozen little little libraries or are they you know, 100 library networks, this makes a difference. Um, and what do they offer for level support, levels of support? And what do you want for levels of support? Um, do you want them to take all the phone calls and you, you've got nothing? Do you just want them to back up your staff? Um, you know, you need to think about what you want and then you gotta think about what these people want to in terms of cost to provide that service. And the hours of support that are being provided as part of that too. Um, you want to know what their cybersecurity qualifications are. That's uh, a great concern these days, and uh, that's an important question to ask. And how redundant are their systems and services? Obviously, um, the cloud hosting is is quite redundant, and you know. But you, like as I said, the services, you know, what's the level of staffing? What's what's the level of ability of the uh, hosting service. So you've got choices, uh, as I said, completely hands off. Do you want to continue being the, the face uh, of service for your members? Continue to have them call you? Uh, do you want you know, to contract that out? And that's your choice. Um, we chose to continue to be the face of the uh, service and to provide the service as we had been, but it's, uh, we're a small staff. It's a nice, uh, uh, not a luxury, but, but a nice thing to know that we can also call on um, the supplier that we chose for a second level of support. Um, should we get stumped, 
Uh, but even, you know, even before the past three years of being a small staff, you wondered if the flu goes through the staff, uh, you know, who's going to be there to answer the phone. Um, so, I mean, that's, that is also a concern. Um, providing support to the central staff, a backup to the central staff. Um, or are you just looking to have a place for your place in the cloud and you do the rest? This is the kind of thing that you need to be, be thinking about and comparing the cost for. Um, how, you know, and how is the, how flexible is, is the vendors, is the solution that you choose? If you choose a support uh, vendor, uh, is there a limit to how many releases they're willing to do a year? Are they, uh, will they limit you to one? Will they do the typical two that uh, Evergreen uh, provides? Uh, and again, you may be off schedule. I know we're, we at Noble are off schedule right now waiting for, for something to come in a, in a release. So we've kind of hung back, which may be, at some point involve us doing playing catch up. You know, how, what's the flexibility? How are they able to and willing to, to work with you? Um, are they willing to work with you by doing upgrades off hours? Um, you know, that's an important thing for service to your libraries. Um, obviously the, the base charges for hosting, charges for additional services, are they going to charge you every time you ask them to do something or every time you, you send them an email or is it kind of a package service? This is what we're doing. This is what we'll provide. We're there for you. Um, and if you've had a system as, as we had for decades uh, in-house, we had all the ability to, to play with it, to try to put some patches, to tweak, to look under the hood, um, all of those kinds of things and how, and asking for a patch from the later release to be backported and all of that. Um, you know, how flexible are, are they to, to work with that kind of thing? Um, so it's really in, in, I phrase it as your access to the system, which is certainly a, a piece of it, uh, but it's really even goes beyond that in terms of uh, particularly in, in, in Evergreen for, uh, for service. And if, you're, if you've paid for a, for a patch, you want that put on sooner rather than later. So there's a, there's a lot of give and take to it. Um, to, to do it well, or at least to do it the way that we've been doing it. Um, and are they providing a test server, a training server, so that you can uh, load the, the, or get the next release loaded on it, so you can experiment with it, so your libraries can learn it before it's -da, rolled out. So all important things. So our experience, we moved to a contractor hosted Google Cloud implementation a year ago now. Uh, we had hosted our own servers since 1980, uh, going way back, obviously, well prior to Evergreen, but with several other systems before that. Uh, we were moving. We needed to move. Uh, we saw a move on our horizon. Our lease was not going to be renewed. And this was kind of tied into an opportunity, uh, pulling a bunch of things together, as I said, the cybersecurity, but finding uh, up in our area in the north of Boston area is, is big for biotechnology and the, the kind of space that we were in that gave you the flexibility for the electrical wiring and the generator and all of that kind of HVAC kind of thing is being converted to lab space and therefore much more expensive. So it, a lot more cost effective, cost efficient to just particularly post pandemic to move to office space. There's a lot more office space available than the, than the flex space uh, being taken up by labs. So that was also a, a concern for us. Uh, so we were able to move to office space at a lower rate uh, and smaller office space by not having as much of a, a uh, computer room presence. Um, it gets us out of the equipment maintenance and upgrade costs. Uh, you know, that's something that we, uh, capital costs that we would uh, invest in uh, every five years or so, as I said. Um, and there's always something. We, we would try to do different servers, different years to kind of spread out the costs, but uh, it was an ongoing cost that gets us out of that. Um, and we saved, as I mentioned, the $3,000 on utility. Um, and when you consider the savings on the, uh, the space, the utilities, uh, the not replacing the equipment every five years. Basically, it's it's really for us close to a wash, not quite there, but I think it is it is there in terms of the additional 
security, uh, peace of mind, uh, backup support, all of that that we're getting from this from this solution. So I think it is. It, I think it's a great value uh, for us. Um, puts us in a much better space, and then with the cybersecurity issue. Um, so we have a contractor that supports Noble staff. Nothing. Nothing really changed in terms of the face of Noble. We still take all the calls, all the um, support issues, uh, and uh, we still are, are, you know, active in the in the software community and and able to, uh, you know, try new patches. Both uh, we did get a test training server that allows us to do part of that, um, but we also developed the expertise to. I say we, not me, my staff, um, developed the expertise to create small uh, evergreen instances on PCs that are lying around. Actually, the staffs, we got better, better laptops and they do it on their own laptop. So we're able to, there are other ways of testing um, new patches or, or experiment on uh, an evergreen uh, installation without needing, needing heavy metal in a rack. Um, so that's our experience. We've been uh, very pleased with, with our experience. Uh, we shopped around, we looked at all of those, all of those solutions uh, with different vendors, spoke to different vendors, spoke about different, um, different proposals, different ways of doing things, uh, and really talked that out. And we were able to move, we moved in December to, to smaller, cheaper office space. So we are saving money in that regard. And, uh, we're very pleased with the way it's worked out. And uh, I can get into more details if you've got any questions. Yes? So I'm assuming what you did in the RFP process. No. Oh. Um, well, <laughs> not exactly. Um, again, we're, we're just a small nonprofit. Um, so we did. We didn't have a basis of what we wanted to do. RFP is too too grand a, a, a you know a statement uh, for what we did, but we did have a basic "this is what we want to do" kind of thing. But no, we didn't have a whole process, a whole bidding process, a whole any process. We just learned who was who in the Evergreen community. I mean, we've been running Evergreen since 2012, so we know kind of who is who in the community, and just reached out to. Uh, concerns, three concerns that we knew did this kind of thing. So what were, what were the considered most strongly, if not the most experience? Well, we did want something in the cloud. One of the proposals was for for a vendor hosted data center, and that's wasn't something we wanted. Although it was something we would consider, but that was not cheaper. Uh, so, so really cost ultimately is always one of the drivers, um, but we wanted the cloud solution and we wanted somebody that was, we, we talked to, to a different vendor than we selected who also had a cloud implementation, but they had just done a few small places. Um, even then they're very active in the, in the community um, and provide all kinds of, of great services, but it's not what... You know, we, we've got 25 libraries, uh, 30 some locations, and that didn't give us a, a great feeling. Uh, so we found a, a vendor that we're very pleased with that's that hosted large systems in the cloud, um, also very active in the community, um, and has been great to work with. Any other questions? Remote work? Yeah. Well, good question. Um, we, a year, well, yeah, was it a year ago or two years ago now in July? I lost track. It's all a blur to me. I guess a year ago, July, uh, we all came back into the office. I was, I was in the office the whole time, uh, as well as our office manager. Um, staff was, was working remotely, um, except as, 
except when they needed to come in to poke the computers. Um, so um, we moved in this past July to 60% uh, in, three days in, two days out. Um, so we've had, we have some staff members, we're all pretty local, so it wasn't particularly our systems manager, Martha, um, you know, very local. So we were able to come in as the equipment, you know, when we had equipment needed, but, uh, but right now we're, we're 60, 40. Yeah. I just lost it. Trying to keep right um, <laughs> um, with the staff that were sort of doing repair and maintenance of the servers at that point, what what happened with their jobs? Did they did did their duty shift or uh, sorry about the sensitive question. <laughs> no, it's not a sensitive question. Um yeah, I mean, they were, ask them. They're they're better able to answer it. Uh, Martha Driscoll in the blue sweater is our systems manager, <laughs> and Michelle Morgan uh, is our uh, system support specialist. Uh, they're the two hands-on people. Hi, how did things change? Can I, I think still do the same work as always, though, uh, with the exception of running everybody. Getting a system, we did troubleshooting, access to the system was one of the big things. Um, one of the vendors had less access, less technical access for us. So we can get on the virtual servers, we can look at log files, um, we can put our GC2 files and things around, uh, break it if we want, uh, but we didn't do that. <laughs> and we have access to Postgres, and we have a lot of off evergreen things that we do with queries and scripts and things that are directly driven by the things. So we still have an evergreen system. I'm still a system manager. Um and it works pretty well. But um yeah, I, I guess just the, the hosting, the care and keeping the operating the operating system and doing the so I guess I haven't been doing a good job of repeating this, and that's a lot to repeat. But basically the question was how has the system staff uh changed? Um the workload changed. And I guess to, um, aside from not having the care and feeding of the hardware, basically it hasn't, the vendor that we uh, have selected allows them to get into the log files, to get into the system and see what they need to see uh, and largely do what they need to do. And so it hasn't been a, a real change there. We've continued as, as we have. Is that a good summary? And a previous question was, as you get my gather from the answer, well, what's our in office or out of office uh, situation? And that was the 60 40. And I guess the other question I forgot to recap uh, was, did we do a whole RFP process? And no, we didn't, because as I said, uh, we're nonprofit. We didn't have to go through that process. We just selected from what we knew of the community. Any other questions? No? Okay, well, if you have any, if you want to talk to me uh, uh, out in the hallway, I'm, I'm here, uh, or our system staff, so feel free to, to talk to them. We're very happy with the selection that we've made, very happy to recommend uh, them, and uh, thanks, for, thanks for listening, and uh, good luck. <laughs>